It's Friday, December 4th, and you're watching The Great Lost Rewatch. Today we're talking about the season two finale, Live Together, Die Alone. Desmond's flashback is kind of all over the place. I think that's to prepare us for Desmond's storyline in later seasons. But we first join him when he's being released from prison. Why was he in jail in the first place? What caused him to become dishonorably discharged? gets his copy of Our Mutual Friend back, which is the book that he is going to read is going to be the last thing he reads before he dies. He's read every wonderful word that Mr. Dickens has written. I don't know that Leslie and I would agree with that. Charles Widmore picks him up, offers Desmond a ton of money if he promises never to contact Penelope again. Desmond refuses the money. Then jump to him in America where he runs into Libby and he needs a boat for a race and conveniently Libby has a boat for a race. So, you know, yay, she had some purpose on the show after all. Name the boat the Elizabeth. I have to say it's a pretty awesome name. Then we jump to right before he meets Jack for the first time while exercising, but we learn that before that he ran into Penelope. Desmond and Penny have a very emotional exchange. Why didn't you write to me? Why didn't you write me? I love Desmond and Penny as a couple more than I love Claire and Charlie. True. Then we jump to Desmond actually participating in the race around the world and he's caught in a huge storm and his boat crashes onto the island and in a weird kind of acid flashback Kelvin goes on the beach to collect Desmond and bring him back to the swan station. He's totally convinces uh, Desmond that he's got to stay in the hatch, he can't go out. If you go out you have to wear the biohazard suit but he's got the biohazard suit so Desmond can't go outside. Kelvin points to a brown spot on the ceiling saying that's Rosinski. I always felt bad for poor Rosinski who just couldn't take the pressure and apparently killed himself. But then we actually met Rosinski who was kind of a jerk. I don't feel so bad. Kelvin has been fixing Desmond's boat all the time so that he could sail away and leave Desmond. Desmond finally figures it out and accidentally kills Inman. Desmond rushes back to the hatch, but he's incredibly late pushing the button, and the whole place is going to hell. He manages to push in the button anyway. He goes to read Our Mutual Friend because he's, you know, thinking he's gonna die now, and um, she's written him a note that she will always love him and she will wait for him. And that's when he hears the pounding noise that we know is John Locke and he realizes that he's not alone. We pick up where the last episode left off. They've, the survivors have seen the boat out on the shoreline. Uh, Leslie gets really, really excited when Saeed takes his shirt off. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Desmond is on the boat, drunk out of his gourd, and he says that they are in a snow globe. There is no outside world. While well, Michael takes our little party of Jack, Kate, Sawyer, and Hurley by land to where the others are, Saeed is going to take the boat with Sun and Jin and get there a lot quicker and scout out the others and then meet up before they attack. Desmond calls the others hostiles, which is the first time we hear that term. Michael and company are walking towards the others. There's the Hurley bird again. Michael tries to shoot the Hurley bird, but he realizes there's no bullets in his gun. Jack's like, oh, I must have forgot to reload that one. Oops. Locke is really adamant about um, not pushing the button anymore. We're going to find out what happens if that button doesn't get pushed. Desmond triggers a fake lockdown and they lock Echo out and they are going to sit and wait until it's time to not push the button. We have a running theme with Lost Season finales having dynamite in them. Much, much, much to my horror. I hate the dynamite. Echo tries to blow open the blast doors and um, gets Charlie pretty singed in the uh, process. Saeed and San and Jin take a boat to the other side of the island and they see the four-toed statue. I don't know what is more disquieting. The fact that the rest of the statue is missing, or that it has four toes. Ooh, I can think of something more disquieting. How about the fact that we're introduced to the four-toed statue in the season two finale, and we won't know why it's important and what's in it until the season five finale? Back with Michael's group, Kate sees that a couple of others are following them, so she turns the tables and shoots at them, and one of them gets away. Michael gets outed as being a traitor, and in a very emotionally sad, I wanted to cry a little bit scene, Hurley um, asks if he killed Anna Lucia and Libby, and Michael admits to shooting them. <sighs> Poor Hurley. And also, just in case you were wondering about how Michael and Walter related. My son! 
Saeed has reached the beach where the others are supposedly living, and he goes to investigate to discover that nobody's there. Jack, Kate, Sawyer, Hurley, and Michael were out in that meadow where the uh, pneumatic tube is dropping all the notebooks. Though in actuality, the people in the pearl were part of the scientific experiment about observation and following directions, not the people in the swan. To which we as an audience go, uh-oh. I think the button's important. While there, Jack sees the signal that Saeed is lighting from the beach. Michael's not taking them where he says that he's taking them. They start to hear the whispers. I didn't catch, it's hard to catch a lot of them. I heard the word Elizabeth, which is Liz Libby's name. Um, and I, I probably picked up on it because it is my own name. And then... <laughs> Ah, so our heroes are captured and they're led to the Paula Ferry that was mentioned in the Pearl Orientation video and who should show up and turn out to be the leader of the others? None other than Henry Gale. Back at the Swan Station, Desmond's kind of losing his nerve and getting more and more concerned about maybe the button is important, so he looks over the log that was printed off in the Pearl computer. I think I crashed your plane. After this discovery, Desmond is more certain than ever that they need to push the button. Now John, before you do something stupid, let's just sit down and- oh! Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. Something stupid right there. The counter goes past zero to the underworld and we have a system failure and we have end of the world type actions where all the metal objects are being dragged towards the electromagnetic wall. I was wrong. Understatement of the year. Desmond then takes the failsafe key, has a sweet memory of Penny and declares his love for her and then turns the key. The sky turns purple and there's a strange noise and when it's over the quarantine sign of that was part of the hatch is blown completely to the beach so we assume that the hatch has exploded or something like that back at the paula ferry henry tells michael that maybe this is for the best because they bit off a little bit more than they could chew when they took dear walt ben says that they are the good guys Henry tells Michael to follow a really specific bearing and that Walt is inside the boat. I love how all the camera shots with Walt are just really tight on his face and he's got a voice saying, please don't notice that I've aged a whole year. Walt and Michael ride off into the sunset in their boat. And that is the last time their series regulars. Jack, Kate, and Sawyer are being taken back to where the others come from. Then Claire sits down next to Charlie and she kisses him. He's so cute. The top secret scene in this episode is called the Hala. In a historic first scene away from the island that's not in a flashback. It flashes to um, somewhere very cold and two guys in a bunker. Do you remember when some people thought that one of those guys was actually Matthew Fox? There is a kind of creepy resemblance to them, but yeah, not the same person. I see electromagnetic activity detected on their computer screen or something like that and they pick up the phone and they call Miss Widmore and Penny picks up and she gets this really excited look on her face because they found the island. I remember you know being sitting at the edge of the couch just like oh my god what's going on and that concludes season two my friends I'll admit I had my concerns about rewatching all of season two um but in light of season five, season two is much more interesting. Once season three gets going, it gets going. And in actuality, once season three gets going, the whole show kind of gets going and it doesn't let up ever. So, yay. I'm back tomorrow with A Tale of Two Cities, another Dickens novel reference there. So I'll see you then. We're gonna need to watch that again. Uh, Denny, Denny. Huh, I think I've come up with a mash name for uh, Desmond and Penny. Uh, Leslie, you probably have much more interesting things to say about this episode. <gasps> oh my god, I've been talking for 10 minutes and it's only about Desmond's flashback. Oh my god.